Hi YouTube. Um, I'm going to make my, uh, I guess, labor and delivery video because I have the time and he's here, obviously. Um, if you can kind of see him, I'll show him better later. But um, yeah, I have the time because he's sleeping, so I'm going to try and do this um, within my time limit. Um, okay, so let's see. Thursday on December 29th. I went um, to the hospital to be induced. I got I woke up at 4:30, got ready, got all my stuff, and we went and we got there around six. Well, um, I didn't have my room ready because um, someone had come in in labor, and you know they're ahead of the people that are being induced. So um, I had to wait about an hour. I went down to the cafeteria, got a little um, a little something to eat. And um, by that time, we went upstairs and only had to wait about 5-10 minutes and my room was ready. So we went back to my room, um, got settled, I got hooked up on monitors and everything. They um, started my IV with fluids and all that stuff. I got my Pitocin, I think, around 9 o'clock, I want to say. But I didn't start going into labor. I don't know what that was. Um, <laughs> I didn't start going into labor until about 10 o'clock. So, um, and at 10 o'clock, it was, um, you know, the contractions weren't that bad. Um, you know, they were pretty mild and spaced apart and everything like that. Um, then around 12 o'clock, uh, one of the doc one of the OB doctors that I guess was still on call came in and she broke my water. She said I was about was I? Yeah, no, hold on. Cuz when I first got to the hospital, they checked me and I was one and a half centimeters and 90%. So, after they started the Pitocin, I think she said I was about 4 maybe. I don't know. I can't remember exactly. I think that was when I was four, and she broke my water. And then um, maybe about half an hour after she broke my water, the contractions got so bad. Like they were, and I don't. I mean, it's a lot different with um, pitocin. I, I'm going to say. I mean, I can't say I know that for a fact, but I'm. I'm pretty sure uh, being on pitocin and being in. Um, natural labor is a lot different because the Pitocin it like forces hard contractions like you don't get to gradually build I mean they gradually give you the Pitocin but you don't get to really gradually um, get the intensity so it's like you know you start off in labor and it's kind of mellow and it gets intense you know it gets more and more intense I was in hard labor for about See from like, I want to say around one or two to about, um, about six, and then I started transition around six to seven because he was born at seven nineteen p.m. So um, yeah, I was in hard labor for a long time, and um, I had back labor. So um, and it was I was in a lot of pain. Um, for a few hours and I ended up of course getting an epidural which I will tell you right now um, I a hundred percent without a doubt no argument you know at all get an epidural like if anyone had wants to ask me if you know I think it's good to get an epidural yes please do it I'm telling you I've you know people tell me oh well they don't work that good or they're crazy. After I got my epidural, I'm telling you, I felt so good after I got my epidural. If my legs were not so numb and like jello, I could have like gone to the mall and gone shopping. Like that's how great I felt. I felt fabulous. I was able to sleep. I was talking, laughing. I was so comfortable. And um, I mean, the fact that my legs were numb kind of made it uncomfortable, but like the pain wise, I was so. I felt fine, besides the fact that I, it was kind of hard to move because, you know, it numbs you and it's really, um, you know, kind of tricky. 
to move. Other than that, I was pretty, I was perfect. Um, and I was, and I got my epidural. I don't remember what time I got my epidural, honestly, because I wasn't paying attention to the clock at that point. I was barely making it through my contractions. Um, the bad thing about getting my epidural, though, is I had to wait for it. They ended up telling me when they came in and checked me, I was about... I was about six centimeters and 100 percent effaced, and they were like, "Well, you can get your epidural any time now." And um, then they were like, "So just ask for it, you know, whenever you want it." And I was like, "Oh, well, I'm okay right now." And um, then about 10 minutes later, uh, I was I was dying. I wanted that epidural. I was getting them like every two minutes. They were lasting for about a minute maybe, and um, I was struggling. So, um, then I was like, okay, I want my epidural now, and they were like, okay, well, he'll be in 10 minutes to do your epidural, he's finishing up someone else's, and I'm like, oh, okay, 10 minutes go by, she comes back in, she's like, oh, well, he has, he had to go to a C-section, so you're gonna have to wait, what, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, he has to, I was freaking out, I was dying, I thought I was going to die, um, I was in so much pain, Finally, it didn't take that long, as long as I thought. He came in after that C-section, and it's like, as soon as he walked in the room, I felt so much better. I guess it's because I knew I was getting the epidural. And people, and um, everybody was telling me, oh, well, you know, just brace yourself for the epidural, it'll be over. And, I mean, I didn't really, I didn't hurt that much when he was doing my epidural at all, because I guess... You know, when you're in that much pain and labor, the needle in your back is not what you're worried about. Like, I would honestly, he could have stuck me 20 times and I would not have cared at that point. Um, but he finally, he got my epidural in and it started working. It was amazing. So I had my epidural. And then um, around 7 o'clock, around 7 o'clock, yeah, yeah, easing up to 7 o'clock, um, I started feeling like someone was sitting on my chest. Um, I it was I could I could breathe, you know, but I, it was kind of like I had to, you know, like I had to really suck it in to get a good deep breath in, and I, it felt tight. And um, I was like, well, you know, I told my nurse, and she was like, okay, well, let me know if it gets worse, um, and everything like that. And she checked me, and I was about a 7 or an 8. Um, because the thing was, is they were talking, to, and, and his head was really low. They could feel his head at that point. Um, he was really, really low. Um, so, and the doctor actually had come in and checked after at that point. And he was like, he walked in there, and he, and he checked me, and he... Um, he reached his hand in there and he's like, oh my gosh, she's a full 10 centimeters. And I, I kind of, I was in shock. Like, I looked at him and I was like, oh my God, seriously? With that kind of face? And I just looked at him and he's like, oh, no, 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 no. You're about, and he's, he was stretched, he was able to stretch my cervix out with his two fingers. Like, he was able to stretch it apart and make me an eight and close it and I was a seven. So, my cervix was, you know, stretching, but it wasn't like, you know, it was kind of seven or eight-ish. And I was 100% of face and his head was so far down. So, um, they were like, okay, well, you know, we gotta wait till you're 10, and he left, and then I think, it, it wasn't long after that, because I, I felt, after the chest pressure and everything, I kind of, I could literally feel his head coming down. I could feel him moving down, you know, to come out, and, um, I didn't really feel the urge to push necessarily I just felt I could feel him coming down and out and um I was like whoa you know and my mom looked at me she was like what and I was like I think we need to get the doctor and um I was like okay so I called my nurse in they called my nurse and the doctor came in with my nurse and um he was like well we'll check your cervix again and he went to lift open, you know, he went to lift open the sheet to reach in and check my cervix, and I was already crowning. So, well, he was already crowning. And, um, he's so cute. And <laughs> so I was already crowning, and I was like, oh my gosh, he was like, okay, well, you're crowning, we gotta get, we gotta get this going. So they took the stirrups out, 
and I'm, you know, like freaking out because I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, this is happening. We get, you know, we're getting this done. Um, they got the stirrups out. Uh, my right stirrup was broken, so my cousin who was also in the room, I had my mom, Tyler's mom, and my cousin in the room with me, and actually one of my, um, I, I had a family friend in there too. She kind of snuck in there. I was only supposed to have three people, but she kind of like hid in the back. Um, so no one said anything to her, but yeah, um, so I had them in there, and she, uh, my cousin was holding my stirrup, and, um, you know, the nurses, everybody started coming in there, getting ready, and I, I guess, you know, the, the, they came off, they turned off my epidural, so, um, I wasn't getting any more pain medication, but I still didn't feel any pain, or, and the pressure wasn't really that intense for me. Um, I pushed for 19 minutes. I did three series of three pushes, um, 10, min uh, 10, 10 counts each. So it was uh, take a breath, it was take a breath, push through 10, stop, take a breath, push through 10, stop, take a breath, push through 10, and then relax. And we waited for another contraction, and I did it that, and I did that again, and I did it a third time, and by the third time he was here. So, um, I would have had it in two series of pushes, but, um, like halfway through, uh, one of my, one of the sets, I, um, lost my breath, so I kind of, like, I was pushing and I started gagging because I wasn't breathing, and I was pushing at the same time, and, yeah, it wasn't that good, and, um, I think I tried to push when I wasn't having a contraction, so, yeah, but, um, yeah, he would have made it out just a little bit sooner, but uh, that's okay. 19 minutes wasn't that bad. But my delivery, I didn't feel any pain at all, really. Um, it was perfectly fine. I was in more pain from, put, like, not breathing and, you know, like, pushing than him actually coming. So my labor and delivery was amazing. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Right afterwards, I felt really good. Um, I... I didn't feel crappy at all. Um, right, actually, today is the day I feel the worst, and it's just because my back is sore, and that's it. Like other than that, I'm I feel fabulous. So, yeah. And then he was born at 7:19 p.m. He was six pounds, 12 ounces, and 18 inches long. Um, he got weighed before we left, and he was six 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 pounds six ounces. So he, he did lose a little weight, but of course it's normal and all that. And we have a checkup on Monday. So, um, yeah, I'll let you guys know how the checkup goes. But um, I will show you him. His blanket doesn't match his outfit, but that's okay. Oh, no, don't, don't cover your face. Okay, here. Come on, son. What are you doing? There he is. There's Jaden. He got a bath a little while ago. And he didn't like that too much. But there he is. There he is. He's not going to open his eyes. He has blue eyes right now. Dark blue eyes. Um, but most babies I read do come out with... Well, not most babies, but a lot of babies do come out with blue eyes. And they end up changing later. And you have a piece of hair sticking up. It's bothering me. I have to brush it out. Anyway, um, most of them come out with blue eyes, but they end up changing later. So his might change. But then again, Tyler has um, blue eyes in his family. And I have some in mine. So um, we'll see. But yeah. It's my baby boy. And I'm so happy and so excited. And um, I slept pretty good last night, so I'm not too tired today. But I will update you guys a little later and as soon as I can when I have anything new. But I just wanted to tell you guys my labor and delivery and let you see him. Alright, so we'll see you guys later. Bye, YouTube.